spending this Friday afternoon with us. I know we normally do this on Thursday. This is Friday. So we're going to try to get you in and get you out on time, but we will not take away from your engagement with our panelists and speakers. You will have the time to chit chat with them. So again, this is our fiscal year capital projects, contracting opportunities workshop. I'm going to give you more about those details, but I'm excited because we get to kick off this year with my boss, with the county's executive, the county's administrator. And if you've never heard from Monica yourself, Ms. Apparel, she's going to come to you unscripted because this is who she is. And she just wants to make sure that you guys know how she, her team, and the commission really supports our efforts, which means they support you. So your county, my county administrator, Monica Sparrow. Thank you, guys. Um, and thank you, Sandy. And he says unscripted, but they gave me things to talk about. So, so, so and there, I'm, I'm, I'm fulfilling his promise of being me. So, um, good afternoon, everybody. And I, I want to welcome you all. And I want to make sure my team doesn't get too comfortable in these seats up here, because they belong to our, my bosses. Um, but uh, I am really um, excited to talk to you all today, uh, because I get to share with you um, my really talented team, um, and, and we've got a, a group of professionals in, in this county that um, I will put up against any, any other community. We are committed, smart, um, um, uh, committed to making opportunities, um, provide opportunities in our community. Um, it's very important, you know, our, our county commissioners, they set the policy for, for this organization and for this community. Um, as, as a Broward County government, and they charge us with putting that into motion. You know, one of the biggest commitments that they have made to this community is to make sure that there are opportunities for, um, uh, for businesses of all sizes, of all types, of all disciplines, um, and to make sure that we're doing the proper outreach um, to those um, businesses. So this is one of those opportunities that we are doing outreach. Um, this is a great one, and you guys are in for a treat. Um, I think Sandy has given um, everybody strict instructions to try to keep it between five minutes or so, because you're going to hear from a lot of disciplines. Um, and I and I love that we're starting our community at a younger age because we get to, they get to learn about county government today too. So welcome, young ladies and gentlemen. Um, so um, the county has just adopted its fiscal year 24 budget. Um, we started October 1st, so that means there's a whole lot of additional opportunities out there. Um, we range from everything from, you know, aviation to, to surtax and um, uh, a lot of public safety related and transportation and, and public works projects and um, you name it, we've got it. Um, we have, we'll run thousands of solicitations um, for uh, um, for different services and and, and um, initiatives that the county needs services that we need and it seems like we've got a, a wide diversity of, of service areas um, represented today and looking through who's um, RSVP'd and who's in, amongst us so I'm really excited for you all to hear because what, when we have um, different initiatives that we have to go out with you never really know um, who's out there that can provide it unless you're in our system. So it's very important that you're, you know, a registered um, organization with us because then we get to, you guys get to decide what type of information you want from us, which types of projects are interesting or that you want to consider to, to do work with us um, um, related to that body of work. So when you guys select, self-select the types of information you want, and you're going to start getting tons of information when we have different um, services that we need. Um, and then you can make that decision about whether or not you want to um, compete for that. But there's so much opportunity, and I'm really excited. You are amongst the best of the best here today. Um, Sandy Michael McDonald, Maribel Feliciano um, run this um, division, and, and with their assistance, they bring in all of our, um, our departments and, and all our divisions to, to make sure that these opportunities are in front of you. 
everything, like I said, parks and recreation, we do library thing, you know, we have solicitations for things in the libraries that you might not necessarily think you might want to work with the library, but your area of work, we may need um, expertise in that area. So you just don't know what you don't know. That's what I always say in my job. Every day I come and I learn something new. Um, and I'm hoping that you guys leave today learning something new about the county um, and getting excited about doing business with the county. Um, I've been with Broward County for 15 years. Um, and I will tell you, we have our challenging moments, but we have a lot of fulfilling ones. And I love this organization. I love our community. Um, and, and again, we have a great team behind us um, that um, is going to share some opportunities and what they do and, and some of our major capital initiatives that are coming out here, significant um, opportunities and outreach to all levels of, of, um, of our community and our disciplines. Um, as many of you know, um, the, you know, the county commission has set a policy to make sure that we have um, certain uh, goals and, and certain um, uh, solicitations have CBE reserves. So again, from small to large, you know, there's a piece of, of the action and a piece of the body of work for everybody. So I'm not gonna talk anymore. I, I know you guys have a lot to cover. Um, Sandy and Maribel, I'm gonna let, let it go back to you guys, but um, I think you're gonna be excited about everything that you're gonna hear today and, and the body of public works. Uh, you got our director here, I see, and, um, and a lot of our senior leadership from many of our departments. So, uh, Sandy, you're going to stay up there? Yes, ma'am. I'm All staying right. up here. I'm going to take off unless anyone has a question for me. I know he probably is say, being fearful that I just opened it up, but I'm sure. going to see if anyone does have a question for the administrator. I am happy to take it. Going once. All right, guys, you're in great hands. Thank you for your interest and your participation today. Thank you, Monica, and thank you for stopping by. And seriously, thanks for that genuine commitment. So here we go. Here's the housekeeping, and here's the rules for the day. And again, I know he is going to have to leave me, so you do need to know he's here. As he's walking out, don't be distracted. You know, grab his car, but don't grab his car because I'm going to give you his contact information anyway. So Trevor Fisher is here, the Public Works Director. And why you need to know? Why you need to know Trevor? the number one invoicing department in the county. So that means who has the most contract, who's paying the most bill, who has the total dollar volume. It's all things public work, so I just put him out there. So, you know, feel free when he starts to walk, somebody tripping, other person get his business card, but that's Trevor. So what we're gonna try to do, and Monica is spot on, and I've already spoken to our representatives and we do expect two more. Our representatives are going to try to take five to seven minutes to tell you about some of their highlights for fiscal year 24 and beyond. And that's why it's going to be some of their highlights. The actual presentation, the PowerPoints that they'll be speaking from, in about 10 days from today, you'll find that on our website, on our YouTube, the whole presentation, but specifically the PowerPoints. So as you take your notes, as someone describes a project, as they describe the dollar value, some are going to tell you the goal because we've already reviewed it. Then they're going to tell you the body of work they're looking for, and some will tell you like, oh, second quarter of next year or third quarter of the fiscal year. You took those quick notes, but 10 days from now, you'll be able to get the PowerPoint. You'll be able to match your notes to those specific, that specific information, and you'll be able to reach back out or at least begin to trail the project. And guys and girls, that's exactly why we're doing this. That's why we started doing this about seven years ago. Again, and the purchasing director, Bob, he'll be speaking first. We violate nothing. We don't advantage some to disadvantage others. But the county believes it's important for us to share information as much as possible in advance as possible to help all businesses prepare to be competitive with county opportunities. I met Mr. Gleason's two years ago, and one of the things that he says, he'll probably even mention in his comments, that's one of the things he wants to do procurement-wise. It's one thing to post a procurement. And you got to go in the system and you try to deal with it. He wants to, at some point, advertise procurement so he can get more competition, more bidders, and find ways for new bidders to actually get in the game. So we are asking my presenters 
to take five to seven minutes. You should take great notes. We will do Q&A after we go through everyone. And then after we conclude the Q&A, we'll then use the remaining of our time to network with each other as well as to meet this gang up here. Again, you will be receiving an informational notice about the PowerPoints that they'll all go through about when we'll have that up on our website. Hopefully each one of you get the Wednesday night newsletter. If not, you need to make sure that the registration or business card, we can add you to that newsletter. That newsletter will certainly inform you as well as thank you for today, but it will certainly tell you when you can go to our website and find these, this PowerPoint and begin to use it. So that's our uh, county administrator's other point. Fiscal year started October 1. Today is October 13. None of them are out of money. <laughs> You're now getting ready to learn and hear about projects being proposed and some actually being scheduled to hit the street before they hit the street. It's your job to do the necessary follow-up. I always have to give that one disclaimer. I've been in Broward now 10 years. Broward County and all these agencies, we buy a lot. We actually do buy a lot. We don't buy everything, but we buy a lot. But for the things we buy, there is an ordinance, the Business Opportunity Act, that affords us a chance to consider goals, front end and back. I know we don't do the world's best job on the front end, professional services. We want to get more of those, get more of those businesses in the game. But at the end of the day, if the county is procuring a good material service or product, the ordinance says we have an opportunity to establish a goal. SBE, CBE, and even on the federal side, DBE and NA Aviation, also the ACDBE. So what we're getting ready to do right now is get going. Again, we want all the presenters to present first. Then we'll come back around and try to entertain all Q&A or at least as much Q&A as we can because I definitely want to leave you some time to follow up with these men and women up here as well as myself and my staff. And for staff, as mentioned, Maribel Feliciano is here, our assistant director. Catherine Menace is in the back. She's with our, our ED division. Pam is really running the show today on behalf of our outreach. Monique is right here as our outreach uh, manager. And if I miss somebody, it will curse me out. So let me pan this room one more time. I think that's our staff. So with that, I want to get started first with our purchasing director who can no longer say he knew. Y'all saw him here last year, and you saw him the year before when he stood over there and acted for five minutes like he was new. So he ain't new no more. So Bob Gleason is going to tell you a little bit about purchasing, a little bit about his direction. And Bob is going to have to leave me uh, early. Um, so I will allow two or three questions for Bob because he is going to have to step out on me. But Bob is going to be my first five to seven minutes. Mr. Gleason. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. And I am no longer new. I am battle hardened. I have worked here for two years. I think I've seen everything. I'm going to set my timer here for five minutes. So if you hear crickets, the timer's going off. So thank you very much, sir, for having me here. Uh, I think we have, I don't want to look at that, so there you go. So uh, I heard somebody one time say that nobody likes change except a baby in wet diapers. So I think of it in terms of improvements. What we're going to do is improve things, and this is the plan that I presented to the commissioners back in March, and I wanted to share this with you. Um, Monica hit the nail on the head when she said that preparation, preparation, you have to be registered to do business with the county. And I would direct you to our website, Broward.org slash purchasing, and you can find out how to re register there. Uh, so everybody here wants to do business with the county or else you wouldn't be here, I'm assuming that. So let me ask this. How many people in here who are not registered with Broward County in our, in our procurement system? Okay, show of hands. Okay, we've got a few people there. That website, Broward.org slash purchasing, will direct you to how to register. Uh, so that's step one, and if I've helped one person today, that, that's a victory. So um, is there anybody who's not been to our website, our purchasing website? Has every, everybody in here has been to our purchasing website? Okay, that's, that's something you have to do. Uh, 
Is there anybody in here who has not reviewed our contractual terms and conditions, our standard terms and conditions? Has everybody in here seen our terms and conditions? Who has not? Sure. Okay. You have to know the rules of the game. Everything runs through purchasing. I'm not talking about the projects in terms of we're going to, my colleagues here are going to talk about what they have, but all roads to business through a public entity run through the purchasing department. You have to know the rules. You have to know our contracts, terms and conditions, got to be registered and understand how to do business. So with that, let me just move on. So this plan for innovation here is what I outlined that we're going to improve here in the county. And I'm just going to run through this in the next few minutes. So as a former project guy, I think in terms of people, processes, and technology in, in the, as the different levers to, to make improvements into what we do. So from the people perspective, and Monica mentioned that our budget just passed, we have plenty of money, but one of the things we needed to create was a vendor management office to help us manage all of the issues that bubble up in terms of how we do business and respond in a consistent way to all the issues that come up with the solicitation, the process, or any questions with how we do purchasing. So we don't have questions going to 10 different people and getting 15 different answers. Next thing is the Procurement Innovation Council. This is something that uh, I've done elsewhere, and this will be a body of key stakeholders, including Sandy, Michael, thank you, uh, who will be uh, part of this process. We'll have all the major departments, and we'll probably meet quarterly, and we'll go through our processes to find out how we can simplify things, how we can improve things, or make any changes necessary, or stop doing things. If we're doing things that don't add value or don't contribute, then we would go that way. Uh, going to be creating a Broward County Contracting Officer Program, and that's going to be based on something I'm going to get into in just a minute. We're going to create a purchasing manual here within the county so that how we do business or our playbook, our guidebook, how we do business, we're going to create the rules and the guidelines in terms of how we do purchasing, and then we're going to create the playbook, and then we're going to train to that so that all of our purchasing people as well as people within the departments are trained on how we do that. And then this is in the future, but I'd like to have a certified vendor program where we go through our contracts, we go through our solicitations, you know what a bid is, you know what an RFP is, you know what a, uh, an RLI, all the different tools that we do. Once you're familiar with the rules and the tools, then you're ready to, to do, you're better able to do business. Moving on, this is like a 30 minute uh, presentation here. I'm gonna condense into five. So back, we, we just covered people. Now we're gonna talk about our processes. I'm looking at re-engineering our RFP processes. Right now it takes anywhere from 52 weeks to 90 weeks to do an RFP. And that takes a, a lot of time. So there's redundancies in that process. We have a lot of key county stakeholders who, have a, who participate in that process. We have 11 different entities within the county who participate in the procurement RFP process. Sometimes they get to, to look at what we do three times. Sometimes they get as many as 15, 18, or 20 times to, uh, to participate in that process. If we can reduce the friction throughout the process, then maybe we can cut our time down. I, I mentioned the procurement manual. We're going to train to that. The vendor manual, after we get the procurement manual done, then I want a playbook and a guidebook in terms of giving vendors a, uh, a book that they can use to, to help uh, better able to do business with us. A strategic sourcing program is nothing more than looking at what our spend is. Some people in my business talk about a spend cube. What are we buying? Who are we buying it from? How much are we buying? How many are we buying? And then dividing those up into different categories of what is strategic, what's transactional, what's low risk, low value versus high risk, high value. And then what we do is we design our procurement priorities around those, those types of procurements. Technology. This is where it's going to get interesting here. Uh, so we're in the process of uh, improving our technology tools. Uh, I think, so we're, if you're registered with, this, with us now to do business, you're doing that through a system called Periscope S2G. I'm going to go through a timeline here in a minute, 
but we're migrating our legacy contract management and sourcing and solicitation systems into a new program. One of the key pieces that we look to find, I mentioned the spend cube in our strategic sourcing initiative. There'll also be data and analytics for you to be able to analyze who's buying what you sell so that you can target your efforts so that you're not wasting time and you're making sure that you're, you're uh, targeting the right people to, for your goods and your services. So this is the timeline. The actual name of the manufacturer is called Bonfire. We're calling it Beep Pro or Broward Procurement. Uh, we're up now to about, uh, you see that steering wheel in the middle of the, there. We, we just started, or we're completing phase two, project kickoff, we just kicked off. And we hope to launch in March of 2024. So let me just uh, digress here for a second and suggest that what can you do now to get ready for that? I think that's, that's what's going to be important for you. Number one, I mentioned our website, Broward.org slash purchasing. Make sure that you watch that every once in a while, maybe once a week. If you're registered in the system, I would, I would ask that you go in there and check your registration. Make sure your emails are up to date because we're going to be messaging through those emails. Monitor the emails that we send. We are going to be continuing to use the current Periscope S2G program up until March, maybe a little bit after that. So uh, don't forget to do that. Confirm the accuracy of your contact information there. And then lastly, I would say, but wait, there's more. And Mary Bell's going to talk about this a little bit more later on. But we are going to be integrating this system into a South Florida Re Anchor Alliance regional marketplace. So when you register with our system and we post our advertising opportunities, those things are going to be going into a regional marketplace. So you can go to um, a website called South Florida Anchor Alliance.org slash marketplace. You can register there. And I think there's going to be almost 10 public bodies here in South Florida who are going to be posting their opportunities, including us. So Again, we're trying to deliver value, make business available to you, and I think that that will contribute to uh, the value that we can do for you. So I think I hit my time, or maybe I went over. So. Yep, he killed his time by two minutes. All right, sorry. You said seven minutes. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Broward.org slash econdev. That's our website. Here's as mentioned, he's Broward.org slash purchasing. Yes, ma'am. Your Innovation Council, is it staff oriented or is it also public? Yes, it's, it's going to be a public meeting. So the, the actual members of the council, and this is being vetted through administration right now. We haven't actually started it up, so it's conceptual at the moment. But ideally, it would be approximately a quarterly. And it would consist of members, internal members here within, within the, uh, the, the, the departments. It would be chaired by me. And so we would go be going through issues to decide how we can how, can, how we can improve things. M maybe at some point we might have a supplier council, but Sandy's already got a supplier council. <laughs> Sorry, I think that you may want to consider having representation from the vendor because getting feedback would be um, beneficial to both yourselves uh, as agree. well as the public. 
Thank you. I agree. Actually, I've, I've contemplating having, having two chairs reserved for local businesses, but I need to check that with administration before I actually go there. Yes, sir. I'm Eric Young with PSA Management. With the South Florida Group that you said will have access to the bids that you're putting out, if uh, we're successful with Broward County or one of the other members of that organization, will they then be able to piggyback the success of that if we're the uh, ultimate winner? Will others in the organization be uh, piggyback the uh, award? Our, our contract awards, uh, our contracts are enabled for other public bodies to be able to use them. And that's standard, standard process. Now, whether or not the other jurisdictions want to use our contracts is a different question. Sometimes they want to do it on their own, or maybe they might find another contract for the same product or service that they might be using instead of ours. Okay, so one more question for Mr. Gleason. Yes, my name is Sherry Rudolph. Um, I own a company called Legally Clean. We clean corners so you don't have to. And um, I'm interested in learning more about how is this, you know, we come here and we hear all of this information. How is this program different from um, uh, Demand Star? Then, actually, the same company that owns Bonfire uh -huh. also owns Demand Star. Okay. It's a com it's a corporation called Una E U N A, and I think they own three different uh, firms, e, e bidding platforms. One of which is uh, Demand Star. The other one's uh, Bonfire, and I can't remember the name oh. of the third. Is one. there going to be a fee associated with this? No, no fee. Okay, no. and if you could pull back up the first slide that had your information on it, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so we want to thank you for those questions. So what we want to do now, and I, and I probably forgot to share this, and this is going to be an invitation to all my county agencies on your behalf. We understand, as Monica said and as I gave in the prelude, that we're trying to get this information to you five to seven minutes. We are going to make the PowerPoints available. But we actually do know, and I really do thank the directors when they identify their staff to join us. We know that each one of them can do a session for us with you for 90 minutes where you can really dive deep. So we are extending that invitation to all the agencies. We do a lot of meet and greets. So we are extending that invitation to any of the county agencies, even the initiative of MAP, Mobility Advancement Program, you hear from Gretchen, that if we can schedule it, we will set up a session and it might just be us in public works, us in Broward County Transit, us in MAP administration, and we would invite you all back and do a solid 90 minutes with you and just them and their projects and dive into the procurement and dive into the advertisements where you can really get more information. Again, we know that what we're doing today is valuable, but it can even be added to if we had the opportunity for me to just bring one of them and all of you and you really dive in. So what we're going to do now, we're going to keep it going. Uh, aviation will speak next and again five to seven minutes and we'll go through everyone and then we'll come back for our Q&A. So for aviation representing FLL, I've got Carlos today and he's going to share with you what's happening over at FLL. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Mr. McDonald, thank you very much for organizing this great event. I would call it Party of Opportunities in Broward County. And thank you for inviting Aviation Department because we also have several projects that we're going to share with you all. Um, aviation Department, we manage, operate, and provide maintenance to two airports, Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport and North Perry Airport as City of Pembroke Pine, our general aviation airport. At Fort Lauderdale, we are proud to say that we are one of the fastest growing airports in the US. We continue in that line. In last August, we have 7.1% more passenger than the passenger that we served in August 2022. And we have that trend, we continue growing. And as we grow, we create more opportunities for you all, opportunities for engineering, architectural firms, opportunities for contractors and subcontractors. Some of the capital improvement projects that we have are going to be shared with you this afternoon, but this is just an example of the project that we have. 
One of them that is coming very soon is the Terminal 3 generator replacement. In that one, which is related to electricity, HEVAC, we have almost $9 million as a cost estimate to replace three generators. This will create opportunities for HVAC contractors, electrical, some demolition, concrete work, and so forth. It's starting hopefully very, very soon. Uh, this moment, as we are talking, we have a, an internal meeting with purchasing to see how this can move along in a best procedural way. Another project that we have very soon, and this probably is going to hit the street next um, quarter in 2024, is related to security. As an airport, safety and security are paramount. So we need to protect our fence, and we are going to install in the south portion of the airport CCTV system with some electrical work there, creating also opportunity for lights, electrical, security. And this project is around $4 million. The goal is 25%. Uh, so we are talking about $1 million opportunities for 35 CBE, 35 firms, when we talk about subcontracting possibilities. Here we like to share a big one. This is the terminal connectors. We are going to connect Terminal 1, Terminal 2, and Terminal 3. Post security. So we're going to build this facility. So it's going to be post security when the passengers need to go from one terminal to other in Terminal 1, Terminal 2, or Terminal 3. They do not need to, they don't need to leave the buildings. They can connect internal. This is right now in the streets through November. This is a big one, $180 million cost estimate with, I was mentioned this morning, 25 DBE percentage, which means 45 million and a half in opportunities for you guys. If you are DBE 35, I will pay close attention to this one, which is right now on the street. As we do projects in the airfield, land side, here we have a taxiway alpha rehab one. This is in the airfield. We are going to mill and overlay one of our taxiway alpha. This is in the north portion of our airfield. We are talking about $20 million project. And we believe it's going to have around 15, 20% percentage of opportunities. Mainly in MOT, maintenance of traffic, also in payment markings. And when we talk about the airfield, we usually have you know, payment markings, temporary, and then permanent one. So this is a milling and overlay project. In a similar fashion, we're going to have, in the next year, terminal, uh, taxi lane tango rehab. And in aviation, we, we don't call T or A, we use alpha, tango, mic. Uh, so it's another project with uh, $20 million dollars estimated cost. The goal, we estimate, is going to be around 20% or probably more. And again, opportunities for maintenance of traffic in the other side, payment markings, painting opportunities right there. This is, again, a milling and overlay project that we're going to start in 2024-2025. But we, only, we not only manage Fort Lauderdale, we also manage HWO, North Perry Airport, located in the city of Pembroke Pines, General Aviation Airport, where we also have different capital improvement projects, like this one. We're going to mitigate runway crossings. What does it mean? This project is to avoid any collision between the aircraft, to minimize that, to avoid also incursions in the runways. This will create opportunities for MOT, temporary payment markings, and um, final markings also, besides electrical in the airfield. That's an HWO. Very similar to, to that one, we have to mitigate uh, uh, to the runway rehab. OK, mitigate runway 1L crossings. Also, we are concerned, very concerned. We want to avoid at all cost collisions in, the, in our airfield at FLL and HWO, of course. We don't want to be in the news for the wrong uh, conditions, 
So one of the projects is to mitigate hot spots where we, our engineers have identified potential cause of collision. We need to avoid that at all costs, and this is one of our projects that will create opportunities for a small firms to MOT payment markings. Uh, runway, this is again in North Perry Airport, runway 10R, 28 rehabilitation, milling and overlay. Uh, North Perry Airport, our runways, our taxiways, our airfield is more uh, asphalt. So we're going to mill and overlay that asphalt. We're going to do pavement markings, some electrical work. So uh, another 15 to 20% opportunity for a small, for a small firm, a small firms. Uh, hard spots that need to mitigate, very similar to the previous one. Uh, taxiway mic rehab, also at North Perry Airport, another project for 2024, 2025. As soon as the design is complete, we're going to advertise this one. Here we're talking about $1.6 million cost. What we are bringing here to the table is several projects. Airfield at North Perry Airport, at FLL for Lauder Hollywood International Airport, air side, land side, and I haven't even brought anyone about utility, any project about utilities, but let me tell you, in 2024, 2025, we're going to have several utility projects. Water, wastewater, eastern water, electrical, communication, all those projects are coming. All those millions of dollars are being shared with the community of you entrepreneurs. That, that being said, Thank you very much again. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Carlos. Next up, gang, we're going to have our BCT, Broward County Transportation, and we're going to have Arethia with us, and she's joined us in the past, and she will share what's happening with BC. Have y'all seen no television commercials? Raise your hand if you've seen a BCT television commercial. Oh, y'all not watching TV. Come they on. spending money. BCT ah. commercials come on during prime television shows. I'm watching football games and I see BCT. <laughs> so I'm just saying, that's your BCT. Well, that lead in, Sandy, <laughs> we have a lot of exciting things happening in our department. And some of what Sandy's seeing on TV, we're talking about our Primo plan, but we're not talking about that today. What we're talking about today are some of the other things that we have associated and procurement opportunities associated with our department. We wanted to share those and we'll be happy to talk about our Primo plan and those procurements associated with those funding, um, the Surtax funding source. So for those of us who are familiar with us or not, we're the second largest transit agency in Florida um, and one of top America's top 40 transit agencies in the country. Um, ridership, we serve um, about 18 million people annually post um, COVID numbers. We um, serve, we provide fixed route service with 413 fixed route buses. Employees are 1,397 transit professionals strong. We connect with communities. Um, from West Palm Beach, where we do serve to Miami with our express service. We maintain um, and operate two maintenance facilities uh, that serves, puts the buses out daily and um, serve 17 municipalities with community bus shuttle service. Wanted to talk real fast about, you know, the totality of what I'm sharing today. 13 projects and 46 contracts totaling about 244 million a big project for us and we're happy to talk about it today or Copen's garage in Pompano Beach. This are just what it looks like today and what it's gonna look like when we put a contract out and redo and renovate that facility. We are happy to put a project out for with a construction value of 210 million. So we're gonna renovate our facility to add a new maintenance building, new training building. We're gonna demo existing maintenance building. We're gonna redo the drainage, the site lighting. We're gonna electrify the site. So 100% electric buses will be um, served and dispatched from this garage. It'll in, the work will include site construction, stormwater drainage, structural steel, waterproofing and roofing, drywall installation, electrical, solar canopies, gonna generate power from that site. 
and, and all those construction trades. We have not submitted this yet for goals, but it's 100% surtax funded project, so it's gonna have CB goals, and Sandy will set those goals, um, the numbers for us, but anticipate um, the small business participation will total over 40 million for us for this contract so lots of opportunities coming out of this for small business um, for sm small businesses countywide um, associated with that also we're going to be putting out an RFP for construction engineering inspection services to oversee that construction and that'll be a three million dollar contract some of the other things we do in our in our agency and these contracts here and what I'm talking about next is coming out of our um, maintenance and operations division and our paratransit division. Bus tire leasing contract, 6.1 million. Preventive maintenance part and supplies contract, 15 million. Preventive maintenance filter kits, 700,000. Uh, vehicles, we buy vehicles too. Um, fleet services also is in our department. But what we're showing here is 172,000 for paratransit services um, vehicle decals. 12 passenger um, capacity vans um, that we'll also be procuring for. In addition to those things, we wanted to talk a little bit about some of our IT um, and technology type things. You know, we provide transit service, but we also do that um, with technology that allows us to pull our vehicles out, to track our vehicles when they're out on, on about, collect fares, and in all of that, oversee the projects that we manage. So for a Vale system, we're gonna be looking at replacement of that system with a $4.4 million contract. We're looking at different options for um, payment collection, and we're looking at a contactless open payment system for 1.8 million. Project management um, software, we'll be procuring for that um, 668,000, and a, a pass automatic passenger counter system for 315,000. Our traditional things we do, and we've over the last 15 years put out quite a bit of procurements associated with our bus shelter program. So we'll be continuing that um, and we'll be putting out uh, smaller than we usually do, but um, one specific one for bus shelter installation and, and procurement. So furnish and install of bus shelters for 1.3 million and continue to make AD improvements and other improvements at our bus stops. So we'll be putting out a contract for that for 600,000. So this is just uh, overall um, of what I just spoke about, different amounts and the dates that we will be anticipating putting those out. We have several of them that are ready to go out and we're about to send them um, to our purchasing colleagues and looking at this come in month or two through the fall. The Copens project that I mentioned earlier, we're in design and we're expected to complete that design in summer of next year. We'll be putting out a bid for that project in late summer 2024. The tire leasing tw winter 2024 and our contact lakes payment early, late 24, early 25. So I'll be happy to answer questions on these projects and any other projects anyone have um, any questions on, be here to talk um, also after one-on-one um, -on -one if anyone would like to do that too. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And as she mentioned or as she alluded to, um, so BCT is one of ours who could stay here for two hours and just keep telling you about all their projects. And though Gretchen's gonna speak a little later about MAP, the Mobility Advancement Program, that's also strongly tied uh, to BCT. And the thing that really is hot right now, sexy right now, those commercials that I was referencing is really about Primo. And the only thing I know about Primo, over 15 years, $4.1 billion, and a whole lot of activity to happen with 200 miles of road and rail throughout this county. I learned that because I watched the commercial about 10 times. So I'm just saying, and they will have goals, small business goals and federal goals. We do CBE and we do DBE, but Aretha, thank you again, and thanks for always coming and sharing. So at this time, we're gonna have Ms. Burroughs talk to us about C. So we keep saying the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau, but they also have a new name, Visit Lauderdale. Am I accurate? You are accurate. 
Let's hear about CVB and what's happening at the convention center and where there might be small business opportunities. Thank you all for coming this evening. Um, we are the Convention and Visitors Bureau for Broward County, where people know us as Visit Lauderdale, where we welcome everyone under the sun, and we mean that for our vendors as well. Um, we are the event and economic engine arm for Broward County. Um, as many of you may know, our convention center is currently under renovation, um, where we are now building a 801 room hotel we are now doing an east expansion on the intercoastal for a 400,000 square foot ballroom. We will have the largest ballroom south of Orlando. And we will also have a public plaza, and that will include some restaurants. So we're not looking to just have events in the building. We are looking to have events outside of the building as well. Um, most of our projects are tied up in the ongoing construction projects. That young gentleman that was introduced to you at the beginning, Mr. Trevor Fish, Fisher, has most of my projects at this moment. Um, but as the construct, construction ends and a lot of the major renovation projects end, our capital projects list will be more robust. Um, but some of the projects that we have going on now is our digital signage, signage and wayfinding. Um, that is a revenue generating item for us, but we are looking to do, get dual purpose out of most of our projects. So where we have digital signage, where events come to the convention center, they can advertise their events, they can advertise their logos, their business, and when those signs are being used, we want to use those signage to help our clients and customers and patrons move around the convention center a lot easier because it's going to be a very big um, plaza by the time it's done. Our existing West Building alone has five, five and a half football fields of exhibit hall space by itself that's already there existing there. Um, one of our other projects is our porno sales system. We're looking for a nice system that our clients can use to purchase uh, concessions and other things that we may be selling at the convention center. As you know, they do tap and pay. You can tap and pay with your phone. You can tap and pay with your card, all kind of things. We want to make sure that all of those opportunities are available to our clients when they come visit our convention center. Um, some of our things going out this fiscal year are more event specific, which would be our China and flatware and place setting which also includes some of the small things that we use, like coffee urns and food warmers and things of that nature. But the current China there is the original China, and we are looking to upgrade it to match with all the other renovations that we're doing there. So you will see that come out this fiscal year. Another thing that we're looking for is our vertical transportation, which will include our escalators and elevators to include our parking garage. Um, some of those are new in the West Building and they are no longer under warranty, so you will see that coming out soon for maintenance and repair for those types of equipment. And another thing we're looking for is event blackout petitions. We want to be able to dress up our exhibit hall for formal balls and things of that nature that will allow us to maximize the use of our exhibit hall. And a lot of times the divider walls aren't that pretty, so we're looking for petition cartons that will make it a more elaborate view if people decide to use our exhibit hall for more elegant events. So those are some of our um, top uh, projects that will be coming out this specific uh, fiscal year. So we look forward to working with you on any of those opportunities that you specialize in. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. So back in the day, we said, penny for transportation. Got you to go to the polls. Thank you. Then we said, surtax. Just trying to describe what we're going to do with that penny. Then we officially said, no, you need to understand. Map Broward. So Gretchen Cassini is our county's lead for Map Broward. She'll explain Map Broward. But she also put the emphasis on the fact that Map Broward is Broward County projects and activities but it's also municipality projects and opportunities. And this is the only time and the first time as a county with Matt Broward, we can require the cities, if they touch Matt Broward funds, to also now use you, our local small businesses. So with that, Gretchen, take Matt Broward and go with it. Thank you, Sandy, and thank all of you for being here on a Friday afternoon. It's great to see so many uh, faces in the audience. 
I don't want to spend a lot of time on what Matt Broward is. Uh, for those of you that are driving around, I hope you are seeing construction and memorialized signage. We have been successful in getting almost 400 projects completed in the first four years, even with the pandemic. So I'm very proud of that. And we've got another 25 years to go. This is a $16 billion local sales surtax that is also expected to draw down at least $2.5 billion of state and federal money. So as Sandy mentioned, there's a lot of opportunity associated with this program uh, over the next 25 years. And I am going to focus primarily on municipal projects uh, today, but I did want to mention to you all when we get to the uh, slides that have QR codes, I just want to get you prepared. I see some people have their phones out, but for those of you that might want to do some more uh, on the website afterwards, be prepared because we will have a QR code in just a couple slides from now. As you can see, almost $700 million worth of projects thus far have been reviewed, 190 projects worth for CBE goals. And even though Sandy didn't mention it, it's a 30% CBE goal for this particular program. The county generally has a 25% goal, but the surtax has a 30% goal on it. That's on all eligible projects over the course of the 30 years, of course. So as we were talking about the municipal aspect of the uh, program, while rather small, it's, it's running around 20, 22% of the funds that we've been giving out since 2020. Uh, but we've had over 150 municipal projects. That's not including the community shuttle program that's under Arethia. That's in addition to that. And we have projects in a variety of phases. We have planning, design, and construction projects that can be funded for the municipalities, and as well as um, two types of projects. That's capital projects, which is new construction, or rehabilitation and maintenance projects. And you'll see more details about that in just a moment. So all surtax projects, ooh, wow. Sorry about that. All surtax projects that are municipal are reviewed for goals. And um, you'll, unfortunately, not all of our projects have goals at this point. When I get to that area of the presentation, I will point out um, projects that have not been reviewed yet, those that have. But cities also have the opportunity to piggyback off of, pro of contracts. They don't do that very frequently. They tend to go out and do a comp competitive solicitation process. This is where your QR code is. My goodness, OK. And so if you'd like to scan that, it'll take you to a five-year plan for all of the municipal projects. It'll show you the projects that have been awarded from 2020 all the way through 2027. And within the next week, We'll also have the new fifth year added for fiscal year 2028. That was just uh, approved on October 1st, so we're getting that uploaded to the website. But you can see all of the projects that are programmed from 2020 through 2027 in the 29 participating municipalities. So now let's get into the actual projects themselves. We're going to start with um, all of the municipal projects that are capital in nature. So these are projects that we expect the cities to release, uh, they, and they do their own solicitations. So if you're interested in any of these projects, you have to go to the city um, itself, the city project sponsor, go onto their website and register with their solicitation, their purchasing uh, software. So with Coral Springs, we do not yet have a goal assigned on that project. Same with um, the Lighthouse Point project. The, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about the Pembroke Pines and City of Miramar project. This is one, this is the largest project, municipal project to date. The current value of surtax in the project is $51 million. 
And the project, project is expected to be much larger than that. They are seeking additional sources of revenue. They're just finalizing design, and so we do expect that they will move into the construction phase in 2024. They will deliver this project in at least three phases uh, related to MOT issues. Then we have um, several projects in the city of Weston and West Park. Uh, the West Park Southwest 21st Street Complete Street Improvement Project does have a 40% CBE goal and that project is valued at almost, oh, sorry, uh, $2 million. And then um, while we don't have a lot of, let me just go to the our rehab and maintenance projects because we do have many, many goals on those. But I did want to give you all an opportunity to just take a look at these. These are also all on our dashboard that the you can could have scanned the QR code for. So let's go to the rehabilitation and maintenance projects. The Fort Lauderdale sidewalk maintenance, which is the second project on the table, does have a 30% goal. The Finger Isles resurfacing has a 40% goal. The Westlake Drive Bridge maintenance, 30%. The Hollandale Beach, which is an almost $3 million project, has a 40% goal. Uh, Lauderdale Lakes sidewalk, sidewalk network has a 35% goal. Um, and the rest of the projects on this list are either pending or do not have a goal assignment as of yet. On the next slide, uh, the first two projects are still waiting for a goal. North Lauderdale sidewalk maintenance is at 40%. Oakland Park North Andrews Garden is at 35%. And Sunrise Roadway resurfacing various locations, the one uh, point eight million dollar project does have a 30 percent cbe goal and again as i mentioned previously we do have a very robust and interactive project dashboard it includes all of the surtax projects it does not include transit service but anything that we can quantify that has a geographic location like a copens road maintenance facility um, some of the projects at the airport actually that just came for surtax funding that would be the automated people mover as well as the intermodal center all of those projects are available on this public project dashboard you can also see all of the public works projects that are expected um, in the 2024 programmed five-year plan. And with that, we'd really welcome you to connect with us on social media. Oh, you need me to go back? Okay. Sorry, QR code. I'm trying to be respectful of my five minutes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm going too fast. Sorry about that. Does everybody have it at this point? Can I move forward? All right. So please connect with us on social media. I, um, I do have a hard stop at 3.30, so if I'm not able to connect with you, I'm gonna leave you my business card here for you. And um, I also have Deshauna Wilson, who's our marketing manager. She's in the back, she's waving. So if you don't have a chance to connect with me, please connect with her. And with that, thank you very much. Gretchen, thank you, and yes. thank Matt. So another part of that list that Gretchen was sharing with you, raise your hand if you receive our Wednesday night newsletter. Okay, so for those of you who didn't raise your hand, you need the newsletter. Because as she explained, even some of the projects that don't have a goal yet, in the newsletter on Wednesday night, we have a section. Can anyone tell me what the name of that section is I'm getting ready to say? a section called hot tips legally above board we take the information that I receive that's processed through staff that I do a final review and when I make that recommended goal that Gretchen said based on that project that's going back to the city that the city will eventually put on the street first Wednesday after I review it I stick it in the newsletter I call it a hot tip. Town of Davie, $4 million project. Here's the scope. Here's the opportunities. 30% goal recommended. And I just put that in the newsletter. It allows you to begin to do some homework. No, I don't know what day is coming on the street. 
But as Gretchen said, even through our office, you can find out all of the contacts for all of the cities. You can also find out all of the platforms for the bins of all the cities. We're just trying to help you be in a position to get as much information as possible. And for a lot of those contracts with the cities, with the goals, for you to begin to meet with likely bidders from those cities as primes to let them know that they may have been working with the city of Davie for 30 years. They may have been doing road improvement projects for 30 years. But if the city of Davie is getting ready to touch this surtax money, city of Davie is going to have to use whomever the prime is, small businesses. So hint, hint, some of my small businesses are still ahead of the curve because all primes aren't aware yet. Many are getting aware. We did just have a real popular workshop with primes explaining everything I just said, but some you're still in advantage as CBEs because all primes don't quite know yet, but they will need to know if the city is touching the Map Broward Fund. So if you're not getting our newsletter, I believe staff at the end of the day, for the last slide, we'll have our QR code where you can just click it and then you can be subscribed to that Wednesday newsletter. So thanks again, Gretchen. And now we will move to Parks and Rec. And what do I normally say about Parks and Rec every year? For a lot of different disciplines, Parks and Rec, and I hope they don't disappoint me this year, but Parks and Rec is normally one of our areas where a lot of my smallest of the small businesses, based on the discipline, has a chance to get in the game. Yep, you're not gonna be a prime on my $1 billion convention center. You're not, you're gonna be a sub. You're probably gonna be a sub to a sub. But a lot of the projects that Park normally introduces every year, they're those that 180, those 240s, that 400,000 and 600,000 that really affords that small business and the smallest of my small to get in the game as a prime and not necessarily just as a sub. So with that, you can tell me if I didn't mess up at all that at all. No, that you day. did a great job. Nadine, okay, well, here we go. Nadine, thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Nadine Levy. I'm the capital ad prog ad program administrator at for parks uh, and recreation. And as Sandy said, um, we don't do the th three-digit million-dollar project, but we have some two-digit million-dollar projects and a lot of under one million-dollar projects. Um, so there are opportunities, and we do everything, roads, infrastructure, uh, utilities, um, um, conveying systems, uh, uh, on land, in, in marine works, we do everything. We're a little, um, we, we do everything. Um, so we have several projects throughout the, throughout parks that we're working on, and our parks take, run oh I'm sorry parks run the full gamut of um, Broward County from east to west we have uh, these are our current projects these are active on the street bids right now um, we have um, some that we're looking for uh, CB design firms uh, some we're looking for CB construction related uh, projects um, these include, we're doing some office conversions. It's a 2,500 square foot uh, existing building. We want to convert it from one use to another use into our office space. Um, uh, so we're currently in design and expect construction to start in 2025. Uh, so be aware of that. We've got another one that actually just opened. The bids just opened and we're, it's approaching an award, but there might still be an opportunity you know, to, to negotiate with a prime vendor if you're a CBE. Um, that's CB Smith Aquatics Building. We have the Hollywood North Beach Mooring Fields. That, that again, is one of our uh, park on the, in the coastal, and we're doing new um, mooring buoys, dredging, uh, boardwalks. We're even doing an 800 square foot um, restroom and laundry building out there. That's that's four million. That's four million dollars. So the, just the CB goal alone is four hundred thousand. It's a relatively low goal, at ten percent, because of the the marine work that's related to it, the marine construction work that's related to it. But typically, we're in the twenty-five percent 
uh, goal range on most of our projects. Um, we have Tradewinds North Education and Farm and Gardens. That's also on the street. That's at least a $12 million project. It's currently advertised for bid. Prime vendors are actively seeking CBE participants on that one. And this is the redevelopment of a 15 acres worth of park campus, including uh, roadways, parking, four new buildings, shade structures, picnic shelters, splash pads, playgrounds, fencing, landscaping, communications, IT infrastructure. What else do we have? A little roofing. We have a little bit of everything in there. Um, we also have some special uh, procurements uh, at two of our nature centers. We're looking for nature center exhibits, uh, including exhibit designers, exhibit um, um, fabrication. Those will be coming out uh, soon. Uh, they, the goal has not been assigned to those yet, but we are anticipating um, in, in 2024 that will be on the street. Okay. Um, we also have future projects. We also have several future projects that are there, and one of them, a special one, has anybody heard all the buzz in, in Broward County about cricket? And it, cricket. Cricket. Not the animal, but the sport. <laughs> all right? Well, that is a park and recreation project. That's part of the reason I was late today because that's our number one priority. It's due in, in seven months and uh, there's a lot to do. Um, but part of what we want to do is upgrade the existing Central Broward Stadium and we plan to do a, uh, HVAC upgrades. Unfortunately, not in time for the World Cup, so this is going to happen after the games. Um, but this is a design build opportunity and I think it is a small business set aside. It's all small business. That's it. So it's in your wheelhouse. So if you're a HVAC person who can do this, this is this is set aside for you. It's about one point one million dollars. Um, it is uh, currently purchasing, waiting to be put out on the street. Okay? So look out for it. And the design, it, again, is a design build, and we hope to, to get something awarded early next year. Um, we have another design build at Plantation Heritage Maintenance Building. We're in step one. We're looking for a design builder who can do this. It's, this project is on the street right now. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, go on there currently there's a typo in there it's not it's not 180 and not 148,000 it's actually 1.48 million um, we're looking for a design builder on that one as well um, we also have multiple playgrounds in our parks that we uh, replace or we add new ones um, every year in which case we have a um, playground, existing playground replacement contract that has a prime vendor on it, but they still have to meet their CBE goals, right? So they'd be looking for earthwork, um, any kind of earthwork related uh, landscaping, um, playground servicing, equipment, most likely it won't be a CBE with the equipment, but there's so many other opportunities for you to uh, participate on those. We also have sh shade structures, that go along with those playgrounds. We also have another big project that's in the planning stage, and that's the uh, our new parks head, headquarters building. This one we're looking for um, design firms. We're going to need a de <laughs> design firms for that one. Uh, we hope to start um, the solicitation pretty soon, uh, with construction starting hopefully in 2026. Um, so that's about 30 to 40,000 square foot furnished office building with parking, landscaping, everything you think that goes into an office building. Um, you're going to have elevators, uh, the parking lot pavement, um, everything that goes in there. Um, most likely we're going to, Sandy's going to require a, a nice hefty goal on that one. So uh, keep, on, keep on the lookout for that. Um, at Central Broward uh, Stadium, we, we've gotten funding for new scoreboards and new grandstands. As I said, 
the games are in seven months, you will see this on the street, hopefully, very, very soon. All right, that's what I was scrambling to pull together to get it ready for you guys uh, to get it on the screen. But we're looking at on around eight hundred eight million dollars worth of improvements to the stadium just in those two items alone. Uh, we also have boardwalk replacements at Secret Woods. Um, we also have pending a parks improvement contract. What we do with those park improvement contract is we are looking for prime vendors, three or so prime vendors who can do miscellaneous improvements in our parks from um, shelter construction, storage building construction, roadway improvements, irrigation, everything's on those park improvement contracts. So keep a lookout for those. Those are, that's, that's coming hopefully in the new year. Just want to give you some ideas. This is the big one at Tradewinds. Again, 15 million, I mean, 15 acres worth of um, improvements at the North, Tradewinds North. So we've done this in three phases. We're wrapping up phase two and uh, one and two right now. Phase one was utilities. Phase two was some parking lots. Phase three is is where the bulk of the work is going to be, and that is on the street currently. So we have um, for appearances, and just gonna just want to show you the range of work that we have looking at. Okay. All right. Thank you. Nadine, thank you, and thanks for sharing that information. And again, guys, she, she put some emphasis on the Central Broward Park because the commission also passed with the new budget some additional dollars, and there's going to be a lot of activities to try to get ready for seven months from now. But as she also mentioned, there's going to be activity even after uh, the World Cup and the tournaments, but there will be several projects similar to as she stated that are going to be cbe reserve we really do want for our central park for our small businesses to make that impact so the world can see everything that's happening here in broward and we can be just as proud as an office that it's also happening uh, because of the small businesses here in broward county so again i got this special guest to my left but hold on hold on you'll get to her in a minute right now i'm going to keep it going and I'm going to ask Kyle to talk to us a little bit about port. Tell us what's happening over at the port. There we go. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. Thanks for your time today. I'm going to try to keep it within my allotted five minutes to help you all stay on track. Uh, I've got these slides kind of organized uh, in two fashions. Uh, one, I'm putting out the different trades and skills that will be associated with our upcoming uh, construction contracts. I'm also going to touch briefly on the various contracting mechanisms that we use at the port. And I'm also going to uh, try and schedule or phase these, uh, these slides in a, matter, in a manner that is consistent with our program planning. So the order and everything is somewhat structured. So first project uh, I'll touch on is our bulkhead replacement. Uh, we have a number of bulkheads that need to be replaced within the next, I think, 10 year horizon. We are currently in the negotiations for the construction of the outlined areas in red. That's gonna be our first phase of uh, bulkheads. We have a design consultant under contract currently for the next phase, which will be don't have a pointer, but uh, we have a design phase two that will be coming out. The negotiations for the first uh, construction set is right now, and associated with that construction is going to be uh, new sheet pile bulkheads, heavy marine construction, soil anchors, concrete, and steel uh, fabrication and delivery. So these are 
going to be fairly consistent trades that will be expected as we go through the various uh, bulkhead replacements. And I do want to point out, I do have an error on this slide, uh, the construction budget for the first group, so the areas outlined in red is actually going to be probably closer to $70 million, not 35 And that's just for the first group. Up next is the Harbor Master Tower. Uh, it'll include demolition, concrete and masonry work, uh, caulking, sealant, stucco repair, and the roofing repairs. So it's going to be all of the, the trades associated with doing a waterproofing project at a building that has an exposed surface. It's going to be at elevated heights, uh, levels 7 through 9, possibly 6 as well. Uh, we'll also be looking to ensure that there's not any kind of structural issues. So we anticipate that this could be a fairly involved project. It will be coming out next year as a hard bid, so it'll be on a low bid uh, procurement. That is our anticipation as of right now. This should be going to purchasing hopefully uh, by the end of this year. Our capital program uh, project management services. So at the port, we utilize a program manager. We recognize the fact that we have a lot of projects that are ongoing at any one time. So to supplement our staff, we bring in uh, consultants. So we are looking to put a competitive solicitation on the street for a program project uh, manager. So this will include uh, overseeing the construction of all of our projects. Uh, I will caveat that uh, be very cognizant when looking at this project. It is a uh, very interesting uh, solicitation that we'll have come out, but if you are a program manager or a project manager, there may be impl uh, implications for uh, exclusions from bidding on any kind of design work because you will be overseeing the construction and the management. So CEI services and design services, if the uh, winning team is selected for this program project management, you would be precluded from bidding on all of these others. So I, I do want to put that out there. Uh, this will be coming out as an RFQ. Uh, put it out there one more time. Say it, say it one more time. One more time. Say that one more time. Uh, if you are on the winning team for the program project management, you will be excluded from bidding on any design, CEI, or CA projects due to the conflict of interest. Uh, next up, our Security Operations Center. This is currently in the design phase. We are, I actually have the 100% plan sitting on my desk for review right now. Uh, we will be advertising this hopefully next year uh, and be looking for likely another hard bid process with a, a low bidder to add a second floor addition to one of our existing buildings. Uh, this will be uh, concrete, masonry, stucco. Uh, there will be an elevator installation uh, to disclose there is currently a pit so there will not be demolition for the pit. The pit is existing, but we will be installing an elevator. Uh, there'll be some exterior landscaping uh, and some low, uh, fair bit of low voltage work uh, for relocating some of our existing security equipment. So this will be coming out hopefully by the end of next year uh, with construction anticipated to begin in sometime late next year to beginning of 2025. Uh, Terminal 29 campus. So this has been a proposal. Uh, it's a very complex project that has implications on some of our other ones. I'll touch on the consolidated maintenance facility that was dis uh, discussed last year. So with this project, it will be a whole campus. It would be a terminal renovation, the construction of a new administration building, a potential new parking garage, new bulkhead and potential, uh, we're hoping to maybe incorporate shore power as well. So this would be a very large project. As of right now, it is still in programming. Uh, to also explain this a little better, this project would be 
brought forward by an independent um, independent company that will be following Broward County procurement project uh, process. So it would be similar to, if anyone remembers our Terminal 25 project, it would be done in a very similar fashion where the procurement will be done through an external group that will follow the Broward County uh, procurement uh, code and it will be displayed on the Broward County website. Uh, so everybody is well informed and well notified of the uh, submittal process for uh, the design and the construction of this project. Our consolidated maintenance facility was previously discussed at uh, future or at previous meetings. I have it in here that the design is currently on pause. The reason for it is uh, we have had to change the proposed location for where we anticipated this consolidated maintenance facility to be constructed and the design of the new location is impacted by that previous Terminal 29 campus. So for the time being, this project is on pause as we try to reevaluate our overall planning of our various construction projects. Uh, cruise Terminal AC, roofing replacement design and construction. Uh, this probably scope will even expand a little bit, but this will be a facilities, uh, port wide facilities uh, contract where we will be looking primarily to replace uh, terminal ACs, uh, any associated curbs, gutters, uh, roofing systems as well. And we anticipate that there may be additional uh, terminal repairs that will be encountered as we go through construction. This is a fairly new uh, development. So this project is going to be put, getting pushed forward uh, for design. We're hoping to have the solicitation out sometime next year. Timing is a little indeterminate as this was something that we identified as a priority uh, just before the, the budget actually. So this is a, a fairly new project that we haven't fully vetted yet, but we do anticipate that this is going to be a new project coming up in the next few years. And this would be an ongoing project because we're going to have to phase uh, multiple years of both design and construction. And last is our facilities maintenance contract. We have several uh, facility maintenance contracts, including our bond engineer report. That one should be coming out fairly soon, I believe end of this quarter, we're hoping to have the solicitation on the street. Uh, other projects that'll be coming out would be our loading bridge PM and repair, lift station PM and repair, fender PM and repair. It's a lot of maintenance related items with the maintenance, uh, preventative maintenance and repair of our existing uh, infrastructure. <coughs> and how did I do on time? Oh, you're good, but thanks for those projects. Let's thank Kyle, guys, for sharing what's happening at the port. <clears throat> and also for those um, new projects right before budget that we'll be hearing more about. That's good to hear that there's even more rolling out. Mm -hmm. So thanks for sharing that. So you heard me in the beginning when we introduced Trevor. He didn't already walked away, but he and his department has the most invoices for processing. That means they do a lot, they do a lot, they do a lot. And Rob Dennis has been around quite some time, so he's going to speak on behalf of Trevor and Public Works and all, well, not all, a whole bunch of the different agencies that they represent. Brother Dennis, it's on you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Rob Dennis, Assistant Director, Public Works Department. Uh, Public Works Department have over a thousand plus employees, dedicated employees and professionals. And we re represent uh, over uh, eight uh, divisions. Uh, a couple of those divisions, I've just named up, uh, Construction Management Division, Facilities uh, Management Division, Highway Bridge and Maintenance, Highway Construction and Engineering, Real Properties and Real Estate Development, Traffic Engineering, and we've got Solid Waste, Recycling Services, and Water Waste Water. So I'll just touch on a couple of these uh, opportunities across the uh, divisions. The significant project, perhaps the most significant project uh, in the county, the uh, redevelopment of the convention center, uh, Cynthia mentioned it earlier, $1 billion worth of work uh, stretching over five GMPs 
is currently in construction. And we're happy to report, thanks to Sandy and his uh, team, uh, that we've now uh, got to a point where we're projecting over 300 plus million in CBE. So that's a significant achievement for the county. Uh, in terms of new projects uh, associated with the convention center, we're looking at uh, the upgrades to the existing convention center, uh, which would include uh, upgrades to the restroom areas, uh, ADA uh, uh, upgrades on that, carpet, uh, recarpeting that space as well. We're looking to put an RFP on the street or a series of RFPs for uh, design consultants, but also for the managing general contractor uh, to construct uh, that project. We're currently developing the uh, scope uh, for that project. We're projected in terms of budget about $25 million worth of work. So here we are. The construction management division have a series of projects as well, uh, vertical constructions. Uh, Long-term opportunities we're looking at in the region of uh, 172 million, and that's quite a series of uh, projects. And we're looking at having designers, uh, contractors associated with uh, the lo those long-term uh, opportunities. The library projects as well include uh, an opportunity that will be coming up in FY24, the Plaza Restoration Project. Uh, there are a series of other county uh, facilities design and construction opportunities in that region of uh, $9 million plus. In addition to that, there are judicial and public uh, safety uh, projects. Again, design and construction opportunities for all of the trades. The BMSD uh, projects, that's a series of projects that's ongoing, uh, continue uh, over the past couple of years. So there are opportunities there in the region of uh, 400 plus million dollars worth of work CBE requirements there as well. Highway Construction and Engineering uh, Division. Again, I have a series of projects here. Uh, the Adaptive uh, Signal and Traffic Control Systems, that's a series of projects that's offering somewhere in the region of $3.4 uh, million worth of CBE uh, attainment. The Intersection Improvements, uh, which are again expanding uh, intersections, giving us uh, opportunities in the region of 600 plus CBE uh, requirements. There are fiber optics uh, network uh, installations and signaling, uh, again, giving us CBE opportunities in terms of uh, the dollar value here, 45,000. There are a series of projects collaborating uh, between the highway construction team and the highway bridge and maintenance team, which are offering additional opportunities uh, for the CBEs. There are massed armed series of projects, which are again managed by the Highway Construction Division, offering additional uh, dollar values there of uh, $1.5 million. The Pine Island Road expansion in FY24, there'll be opportunities there for construction uh, teams. In the school areas, again, we do have opportunities for signage and marking uh, sub consultants and subcontractors. Water Waste Water Services have a series of projects, uh, which uh, I'll go into the generic uh, short line uh, extension replacement uh, projects. Again, that's a water main extension and utility plumbing contractors are uh, basically being looked for. Uh, CBE goal attainment on that is 250,000. The uh, septic tank elimination program, again, consultants and engineers in particular are being looked for. Uh, there's an opportunity there about $2.6 million. Regarding the uh, system's fire flow, there's an RFP uh, that will be going on the street sometime soon, spring 2024, uh, for consultants, engineers, surveyors, and uh, water main uh, contractors. Likewise, uh, there is a bid in the spring of 2024 coming up for plumbers, paving contractors uh, for the right of way along the northeast. 22nd Avenue. Uh, and last but not least, a slide that is Water Waste Water, another series of projects um, coming on stream for summer 2024. We're looking for an RFP uh, for architects, MEP uh, services, engineers, and that relates to the multi purpose pump station in the North Regional Wastewater um, Treatment Plant area. Likewise, we're looking at the general professional services uh, contracts, 
Again, that's uh, an RFP which will be issued very shortly, uh, November 2023, for uh, two consultants, and we're looking for a five-year uh, project uh, time period and up with a $1 million per year uh, max uh, agreement. So that's pretty much it in terms of public works. Appreciate your attendance today. Any questions, I'll be around to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. And again, there's a lot always going on with Public Works with all those different divisions and agencies up under you. So now we're going to go to Resilient Environment Department. And Jacob, Mr. Rice is going to share what's happening with our resilient agencies. Go for it. Hello. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I'm Jacob Rice. I'm the Beach Program Manager for Broward County. Uh, for the Resilient Environment Department, we have, I'll keep it short and sweet because we have one project, but it's a very large, complicated project um, that has four bid opportunities. Uh, so that is our sand bypass project. Uh, the picture, there it is. So the goal of this project, it's a unique project, is to dredge and construct the sand trap uh, just outside Port Everglades uh, with the goal to capture sand that can be for in the future used to renourish um, some of our beaches. And this project is split up into four phases, and each phase will have a bid advertisement separate. The first phase is the dredging of the sand trap. The second is doing a heightened and tightening and, and extension of the north jetty. Third is to come back into the sand trap area, remove rubble that has been exposed, and to conduct a reef mitigation. This is a general overview of what the first and the third phases look like in their footprint. Uh, phase one is actually out for bid right now. Um, that can be found on Periscope. Um, the third phase will be t about two years after the first phase is completed, as then we'll go back and survey the areas that need to be dredged uh, additionally. Phase two is the jetty work, and we expect this to be advertised about summer or fall of this year. Um, this is extend, uh, enhancing and elevating the existing jetty. And then on this next slide, shows more detail of um, extending the jetty out, and this will act to trap um, the sand that goes into um, the sand trap. And lastly uh, is reef mitigation. This will consist of placing four to six foot boulders, uh, two, 0.2 acres near shore, and 0.3 acres offshore into designated areas, and we expect this to go out um, in the summer as well. Uh, if you have additional questions, um, here's my information, um, and I'll be sticking around if anyone needs, wants to chat. Thank you, Jacob. Thanks for sharing that information. So right before we get into the Q&A, and that means we're at the home stretch, we're getting ready to get into your Q&A, and we will do Q&A, but I am pleased that our BCT Transit Director, my new friend and your friend for all things BCT, is able to join us. So I definitely want to give uh, Corey a chance to speak to you, to say hello to you. She opened up our conference this past June, our BBB conference, and she started telling you about uh, Primo and it's been on primo ever since so i definitely want her to chime in and say hello and even if she want to dabble a little bit more into primo i'll allow her and then we'll get into q a so floor is yours hello everybody um i'm gonna stand up because i'm so short you will never see me <laughs> Um, I'm just really thrilled to be here. Uh, my apologies for joining uh, later today. I, I'm, I'm sure that Arethea did an amazing job talking about the projects that we have on tap for 24 and 25, uh, 23 and 24 rather. Um, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, to be honest with you. Um, you know, as Sandy mentioned, you know, the Primo plan, for those of you who are not aware, is an amazing opportunity to provide premium service to the residents and visitors of um, Broward County. And it's so fabulous that it's worth $4.3 billion over 15 years. So translation, lots of money. Bigger translation, we need help building it. We need help figuring out how to build it. We need support. We need 
small businesses, community-based businesses, quite frankly, all businesses to help us with this. Um, 15 years is a very long time. $4.3 billion is a lot of money. But at the end of the day, we're gonna have 24, we're gonna have an annual ridership on that system of 24 million, which is huge. So, um, and it's gonna help a lot of people. So uh, I'm, I'm grateful to have the opportunity to share that with you. You know, we're looking at 200 miles of new transit service. That's commuter rail. That commuter rail is going to operate on the uh, Florida East Coast Railroad. So that's the one that stops you every time you try to go Broward County. And if you were trying to get here earlier today, did you get stuck? Okay, so that's that. Um, so we'll be operating that commuter rail service on there. Then we also have a light rail, light rail service, about 26 miles, that's gonna connect the airport, seaport, and the convention center initially, but it's gonna eventually weave its way through downtown uh, Fort Lauderdale and head west out to Sawgrass Mills Mall. So that's gonna be a great opportunity for anybody who lives along that corridor that needs to work at the airport, seaport, or convention center. It'll be a nice commuting opportunity for them but also for a lot of the visitors that we have in town, I don't know if you've heard the stories of people, I, you know, I have not seen this yet, but I hear that people come into the port with suitcases or they buy the suitcases at Sawgrass Mills Mall, they get them filled up and they go home. So um, that's, that's gonna be amazing for our visitors. And then we have the bus rapid transit and a high frequency bus service along multiple corridors uh, in uh, Broward County. So I'm just so thrilled to see so many people here today. I'm sure you, as small business owners, are thinking, I could be doing a lot of stuff, right? Um, but you know, I just want to encourage you uh, that business development is very important, and spending as much time as you can doing that is important, too. And we are here to support you. We want you to be successful with these programs. We want you to be involved, and we want you to, your businesses to grow. So again, thanks for taking the time out today to you know, sit here and talk to us. And I personally look forward to any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. So as we get ready to go into our Q&A, that slide that you see now, that's a part of the organization that we're part of, uh, primarily focused right now in Broward County and Miami-Dade. We've heard from small businesses for years. Uh, the Health Foundation seeded this opportunity what is this opportunity in short? As a small business, right here in Broward, you would say, well, mm, I got to go to Broward County's website, broward.org slash econdev to find out what's going on with OESBD or to their purchasing website. Then I got to have either another computer or I'll leave this page to go to Broward Schools. Then I got to have another computer or leave this page to go to Broward Health. And what if I really just wanted to find out what's happening in Miami-Dade government as well as Miami-Dade Public School and uh, Jackson Memorial? Well, here we go. South Florida Anchor Alliance, that platform that's there is 23 of us, but 11 of us have already jump-started the pilot where through this platform, you would be able to find bids that Broward's doing, Broward schools are doing, Miami-Dade schools are doing, Miami-Dade County is doing, and each one of those logos are part of the first 11 that started. We hope this grows over the years. We hope all 23 institutions gets involved, and we hope at the end of the day what the original outcome was, how can a small business at their office or their home go to one website and find information on all these other opportunities without having to log in to 10, 12, 13, or 24. So that's the start. You need to know about the South Florida Anchor Alliance. You can follow us more on our website about it, and you can certainly follow that link that's on that screen in front of you to hear more about it. So with that, gang, we are at the Q&A. Um, if you do ask a question, we're gonna ask you to use these mics. Oh, I forgot to tell you in case you didn't know, this is being recorded. So at the end of the day, you're now uh, celebrities. Um, but let's be respectful within your question, so hopefully you can ask your question and it not takes three minutes and 17 seconds, and we certainly wanna to try to answer your question. But keep in mind, 
as we get through the Q&A, the objective is to take the remainder of our time so that you guys can meet all of us and ask even more questions. But please keep in mind, the PowerPoint that you saw today, you will all have access to that in about 10 days on our website. We will make sure each one of those will find this way to you. So here we go with the Q&A. Maribel has a mic. Hey, my small business manager is here. I see Donna Ann. She's going to come and get this mic from me. And uh, we're going to make sure. How he get the mic first? Got to be up front. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Victor Harris. I represent CMTS. We are an owner's rep and construction management firm. I have uh, multiple questions. Uh, first question is from Mr. Carlos Hernandez. Uh, I get one? All right, fine. I'll start with one. All right, one good one. Well, if we can answer this question, the first question is to Mr. Hernandez, and then there are several others. Delivery methods for the projects you talked about. Uh, you mentioned multiple taxiways. What are the delivery methods for those projects? And then secondarily, are they being managed under your uh, current BCAD CEI contract that you have out right now? Thank you for your question. Most of them are going to be design build, design bid build regular design bid build, most of them, or I believe, uh, I would say yes, at least and all of them are going, are going to be designed bid build, traditional, traditional way. At least the ones that I presented. Right? And they are going to be managed through our group of CVE, DVE consultants that we have for designs, for utilities and payment in this case. The CEI that we have will focus more on inspection services. And it could happen because we have limited budget for these uh, CBE and DBE utilities and payment, and also DBE that we share. With the CBE and DBE utilities and payment consultant, we're going to manage the design, and we can share certainly, and we're going to need to share with the inspection teams under the CEI. We'll go here and then come back over here. Over here. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. My name is Kyle. I'm uh, with HNTV. So we're a prime putting together a team. We heard that the, if uh, CBE is on a program manager side, they can't chase design work. Is that the same for a GEC? If a, if a C, CBE is on a GEC team, they cannot be part of a design team for, for instance, a seaport airport connector. So I'm not sure who that go to. But that's my question. Yes, ma'am. I could take it. Broward County Transit, we have put out a GC contract for rail services um, for various tasks that we'll do for our rail system. We are about to award that contract. In that contract is specific language that addresses conflict of interest as relates to your question, but what legal department is telling us is that these, we will be considering the conflict of interest cases on a case-by-case -case basis, so it depends on the scope of work that's, provide, um, that's performed under that contract that will then be assessed to see what impact, if any, or if any conflict exists between that piece of work and the other piece of work or scope that we'll be procuring for. So that will be done on a case-by-case -case basis, but we'll be happy to take your information and share with you the conflict of interest language that's in those current contracts that we're about to award. Thank you. So thank Wonderful. you, Aretha. And that's why I asked Kyle to say it again slowly, because some of you other CBEs have been in some of my other workshops. And us, along with the county attorney's office and purchasing, that's what a decision, that's a decision that was made. Some of it, based on the conflict, the rule is always gonna be written in the solicitation, but it will be considered case by case because we've been making an argument for our CBEs who primarily are never the prime, why could they not be on the front end and the back end? And the county's given us that consideration. So they're not saying it's an automatic, but they are saying, as Aretha just said, is going to be case by case. So if you are CBEs, you do want to take a look at working with primes on the front end. 
as well as trying to work on the back end because when it arises per the project, it could be considered and there may be an opportunity that that CBE, especially if they're not the prime, could be the front and the back. But what we say about all solicitations, you have to go by the language that's out there on the bid portal. You have to follow it. If something changes within that bid, as you know, it'll be listed during that Q&A period or to be listed as an addendum to whatever was on the street. We are working to assure that for the CBEs, there are as many opportunities as possible. And in those examples, those will be looked at as soon as they come to our attention. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, go right ahead, Corey. I, I do want to add something to the, that uh, question. It was a very good question, and Arethia did a fantastic job answering it. Um, you know, from a delivery perspective, we are exploring um, many options um, to deliver that project from design, build, to design, op build, operate, maintain, D-bombs. So as you're thinking through your um, um, BD strategy, please keep that in mind. Okay, so go good. right here and not bring your mics down here. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Woodard. And my question is, do you have plans, and anyone can answer it, to invest in the mental, social, physical well-being of your staff, areas of uh, stress management, for instance? Did that just catch anybody? No, no, it did not. <laughs> um, so I, I will answer that one, too. I, you know, I am so short. No, just cut that on and just stand out there. Okay. It'll still catch you. Yeah. All right, thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, for those of you that aren't aware, um, for us in the transit world, we have been seeing an uptick in um, bus operator assaults. Uh, this has been a national trend. It's very concerning. Um, and so part of, you know, the entire country is trying to address this uh, both at the agency level and then within our association level to try to, to try to figure out how to address this. So to answer your question, yes, we have um, taken some steps to um, address the, the, the issues that are affecting our operators, but also what we've been doing is working with our um, Health and Human Services Department to offer uh, training so that our operators know how to interact with people who may be suffering so from some kind of mental illness um, so that there's an awareness on how to, how, to, how to identify it and then also how to react to it in a way that DISA escalates it and doesn't um, cause further trauma or hurt to other people. So I'm glad that you asked that question. It's on the radar. I think it's a, it's a good question for all employers to be thinking about because we know that mental health has been a, a concern across the country at so many levels from the, you know, the juvenile level all the way up to, uh, to the adults. So um, it is on the radar. We are aware. Um, and, and thank you for your question. And if you happen to be a mental health provider, a therapist, a consultant that works in leadership development and training, peer development, you want to get certified. Because remember, any good material or service the county procures, they have the opportunity to look at small businesses. HR, officially in 2020, did the same with all of its training components. We have CBEs who are now consultants for HR when it comes to leadership development, training, wellness, and other industries. So again, we talk a lot about vertical construction and major construction and projects, anything the county buys. So again, if you're a therapist or if you're that kind of a consultant, get certified. But even with HR, even if you're not certified yet, you can just register with, with them immediately because they have a rotation list in that area specifically. Yes, sir. Ms. Knapp, who's next? Okay, Newton. Good afternoon, Newton Santa, President and CEO of OIC of South Florida. Uh, hey, hi, you doing, Corey? What guidance, caution would you give folks given that the opportunities are so plentiful, yet at CBEs there's a cap, right? Um, so now we're getting through how do you take advantage of all these opportunities, but being mindful of that cap, that threshold, for a CBE, how do you kind of be judicial of that process? Good point, Newton. So again, if you're certified with us, or if you ever considered getting certified with us, again, we're just like private industry. 
you want to find out who it is and what we do. You want to find out, like we said, the program, so you understand all the rules. <clears throat> then you want to learn the process, and that's the other thing that we do with procurement, everything that you need to understand, how to bid, all the information you need to get in advance. Then we talk about people. Meetings like this is making sure you meet the right people. But to Mr. Sannon's point, as a small business, Gretchen also made mention, all of our agencies, without Corey's special initiatives, we do a billion a year. Then you can add all those other special initiatives. And oh yeah, I'm sorry, now we got Surtax, Matt Brower. That's another 355 million a year that can also be put on the street where we're trying to carve out at least 53 million for small businesses. And oh yeah, even with that surtax, that Matt Broward again, now you got 29 cities who also must use small businesses. So to Mr. Sanders' point, a small business has to know their capacity and their size. A small business, as they begin to gain contracts, also have to realize from a certification standpoint, most industries, once you're averaging $5 million a year over three years, you graduate. Construction, once you're averaging $9 million a year over three years, you graduate. There's still county opportunities, but you're no longer a part of the small business program. And you should also remember you want to bite off that apple what you can chew. You always want to be able to deliver whatever you're actually promising. So, yep, there is a ceiling relevant to the small business program, but you also heard today. There's projects far beyond just that window of small business. But the caution would be, as a small business, you just heard me talk about South Florida Anchor Alliance, and that's 11 entities. Talking about 29 cities who belong to Matt Brower. Talking about all of these agencies, even the county agencies who are not here. As a small business, you want to try to become laser focused on two or three or three or four areas based on research you've done of who buys your good material or service and where you can find the competitive opportunity or the competitive edge and focus there. Because guess why? Corey and Gretchen just mentioned, if you were just to take that focus to establish yourself and grow for the first three, four, five years, Matt Brower's still going for 20 more years. The county's still procuring on an annual basis. So understand the incremental growth being a small business and make sure that that growth comes with the idea that you are able to deliver on everything you want so that you can begin to build that reputation. But there really is a ceiling. And that ceiling, even outside my dollar values, is that for 29 cities that's participating in Matt Brower, for all the county agencies participating in Matt Brower for a billion dollars of goods, materials, and services that the county procures every year, you can't bite that whole elephant anyway. So let's find the pieces that really could serve you, that allowed you to participate, competitively participate, win in those participations, and then grow accordingly. That, that would be my point of caution. Don't try to do it all, please. So where are we with the mic? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. It's okay. Hi. My name is Eric Schumer with Sensory. I'm the CEO and founder. One of my questions is that I see, uh, when I speak with uh, many uh, public officers, there is a uh, little awareness of smart industry, industry 4.0, and what like wireless newer technologies bring to the, the fault, like uh, people flow analytics on the, on the Broward Convention Center, or predictive maintenance on the pumps on the, on the, on the ports, or condition-based irrigation on the parks to save money and water and energy. And I don't usually see these topics or these disciplines coming up in requirements or designs for most of the projects. And I was wondering if uh, it's something you guys are taking into consideration. Are you bringing a uh, retainer or consultants to, to drive those type of initiatives? And, and what's the plan in, in that regard? Great. So as a county across the board, are we dabbling in becoming a smart county in most disciplines, industries, and opportunities? Gretchen. So one of the things that we talked about when we went out, it's a great question and I appreciate it. Uh, when we went out to the voters in 2018 to talk about the Surtax program, one of the selling points of the program over 30 years was building innovation and innovative technologies into every single year of the program. I have a very tiny portion of the program. Corey is going to take up 65, 70% of the program with 
Broward County Transportation. And there's so much innovative technology that's associated with that component of the program. Right, adaptive traffic signal technology in the Public Works Department is an innovative technology. Everything that goes into building an adaptive traffic signal system, instead of being based on you know strict timing of our traffic signals, all of that's innovation. We are doing just a tiny renovation project out at the Governmental Center West to try to bring the public uh, into the surtax program to invite them in to learn more about it. And there's augmented reality, virtual reality, everything is wireless. You know, we're trying to use 3D uh, cameras for our conference rooms. So the answer in the surtax program is it's front and center of everything that we are trying to do in Matt Broward. Hi, Carlos from the Haskell Company. Uh, question is for the lady in the seersucker suit, that's awesome, by the way, and our friends at the seaport. Cruise Terminal 29, the program gets bigger and bigger. A lot of stuff happening there. Transition maybe from, from what I heard, which is you're gonna take the public works building and maybe try to program that into the CT29 campus. Is that correct? No, I'll just uh, make a clarification. So the footprint from the T29 campus will impact the location of the consolidated maintenance facility, but that will not, that will be a separate solicitation. That'll be a completely separate project from the 29 campus. It's just impacted by the footprint from 29. Very good. Thank you for the, the distinction. Mm -hmm. um, is CT29 going to be developed by the similar Development writer from CT25. So are you asking for who's going to develop the programming or are you looking I'm at I'm asking the for the delivery method. The delivery method on CT25, at least per public record, suggests that that was a design build. And I read on the thing that it was going to be um, potential managing general contractor yeah. design, yeah, design build. That hasn't been determined yet. That's gonna come out during the programming phase, which is where it's currently at right now. So we don't have an identified delivery method. If I were to speculate, it would probably go in the managing general contractor just based off the port's historic uh, delivery method. However, I do know given the complexity of that project and the you know advancements in design bid build uh, and progressive design builds, there are other delivery methods that are gonna get explored during this programming. That's great because speed to market is one of the challenges there. And I would suggest to you that on the design build side, you can get to market much faster and make sure that the asset is in place to support the port. So understood. Okay. Thank, yep. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, Cynthia Alexander from Senna. And uh, my question is to um, whoever will answer it. Um, okay, I know that all of these are going to need insurance and bonding. Is it going to be broken out, or the, is it the uh, county itself going to do all the bonding? Okay, so the county itself isn't going to do all the bonding. Um, the county on certain projects back in the day used to do some OSEP. But at the end of the day, for purchasing, it all be announced what the bonding requirements are. So the primes and the small businesses will have to meet whatever those obligations are. All projects for all small businesses and primes in the room always will require insurance. So I think indirectly, I'll flip your question. You guys need to know this person can help you with bonding and insurance. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, on to the next. Hi, Ed Pozo with BA. Uh, Mr. Hernandez, how are you today? Uh, is there any information you can share with us on the APM project at the airport? Uh, good afternoon. I didn't mention here any of our master plan future projects, mainly because they are still in the cook. We are cooking the pre-design phase, right? I mentioned mainly utilities and payments and buildings. But it's, it's coming, definitely it's coming. I wouldn't say next year, but in the future ones. We are working currently with our stormwater and master plan team to determine how it's gonna be the impact from a stormwater perspective. 
we don't want to create a big facility and then have flood issues or quality from a stormwater perspective issues. Thank you. There, there was just some write-up in the uh, uh, budget in the brief this year mentioning it, and we were hoping that maybe we'd see it in, 20, in 2024. Uh, are you hopeful for that? Is that something you still think that might be a possibility? I would say it could be. Okay. It could be, certainly. Okay. Could, and I will transfer that to our planning in the vision when I go back to my office. Thank you very afternoon. much. Thank you. Well, Donna Ann moves the mic. Corey wanted to circle back on that other question as well. And Donna Ann is also one back behind you earlier. Uh, hi, the gentleman from Haskell, I just wanted to, um, hi wanted to um, respond to your question um, and from a different perspective. So just please know that we're, we're aware that uh, time is money, to your point, and that we have seen and, and gotten uh, feedback on particular um, rail projects of, of late uh, in terms of uh, costs, at escalations, um, and, you know, because of the cost of goods and services, period. Um, but we, one of the reasons why we want to get um, to a design build, design build, operate, maintain, and some of the other delivery methods is because we want to recognize the advantages that we get when we do that to speed to market. So we're definitely on the radar, and when, we, when it makes sense, the, the, the way will go. Hold here. Here we go. Good afternoon, I'm Tony Farber with MCE. MCE is a CBE structural engineering firm. Sandy knows as a structural engineering firm, we need to meet with primes that are architects meeting with general contractors meet and greet does us no good i have a friend here who is with an architectural firm and i will be introducing him to you so you get to meet an architect and i am hopeful that in 2024, there will be a meet and greet with architects. That would be wonderful. Thank you. You mean with prime architects? Yes. yes a prime. Yes. This one would be a prime. Trust me. And for the record, would there happen to be one other prime architect in this room today? There was. Oh, I no, I, I, I see three leader. hands, so make sure Tori see, Corey, she sees your hand. There you go. Okay, yeah, right. Because we did, because we did say at the end of the day, you always want to network with who's in front of you, behind you, to the left, to the right, because you never know who's in the room that needs you and who you need. But I think my manager heard you from outreach. And since we don't control primes, see, I'm small business, I can work with agencies to see if they're willing to go scream at some prime architects yes. and see if they want to come in the room. Because by my program and ordinance, they don't have to, but we'll ask. You can only ask. There you go. No, I'm going to ask through you because you go write the email for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Um, just to piggyback on the question the gentleman asked about mental health services. Um, if, if a service or good is not, a, is not a part of your program, your planned budget, do you entertain unsolicited proposals? You're in the state of Florida. I'm going to say this the right way in case there's a couple of attorneys. 67 counties in Florida. There's a state statute called unsolicited proposals. I'm government. Someone send it, has to be followed through. That answer is yes. Thank you. And yes, ma'am. Yes. Hi, Faye Munnings from S. Davis and Associates. I have a question regarding the project management RFQ that the port person mentioned. I don't think you mentioned the time frame. 
I don't believe I mentioned the time frame. You're correct. I know that we're developing scope right now and going through the process of getting it into purchasing. So I would expect sometime by next summer, uh, it would probably be coming out for solicitation. So Q2, uh, probably uh, Q3, Q4 on our fiscal calendar. I would expect it to be coming out next year. Okay. Pleasant good day. My name is Joanne Thomas Joseph with Business and Fingerprint Services of God by Joanne Thomas Joseph Company. To all under the sound of my voice, I thank you for this opportunity um, and I hope it continues. My quick question is for the entire panel. Uh, I am a Florida, well actually the only certified minority business in the state of Florida that's offering life scan fingerprints under the Florida Statute 435. My question is, yes or no, do your department have an implementation execution, execution strategy to execute Florida, Florida Statute 435, which simply means a life scan level two background screening is mandated by all who operate on a life site with children, people with disabilities, and the elderly. Thank you. Any of my agencies up here dabble in that? I know my human service does. Parks might get Park, the children. Yes. Um, in, all our, in all the parks and recreation solicitations, there's a section on security requirements, including, I think aviation has one and somebody else has one, but parks has their own unique uh, procurement. On our construction sites, we do require um, contractors to uh, screen their construction, construction employees. Um, there are parks, other solicitations, more on the operational side, may also require your, uh, your scanning. Uh, I can't speak to that. Unfortunately, I deal primarily with the construction side of things. But there is such an option there. Corey? Yeah, I, I believe this to be the case, and, and we need to look into it, but I know that our um, paratransit service, which um, essentially serves our passengers that are unable to use our fixed uh, routes, um, given the nature of the, of the type of passenger that's being transported in those uh, vehicles, there is a, a higher requirement um, from a security perspective. Uh, we use a firm called Transportation America, that firm is a is a is the provider that we um, use to provide those services to our paratransit um, passengers. I would encourage you to reach out to them uh, if you're interested in perhaps helping them with that screening process to see if they would it would be helpful to them. We do not get involved with their hiring. Dang, I have time for two more questions, and I know it's one right here, and then I got front row, front row. All right, not a question, but a quick comment. Um, hi, I'm Tashana Wilson, marketing manager for Matt Broward. Gretchen uh, mentioned me earlier. Um, I just wanted to make a brief little note that I forgot to mention during the presentation, our public uh, project dashboard is currently undergoing a little live maintenance. So for any of you who may have struggled a little bit trying to access the QR code, that's why, but it should be up and running um, as early as later this evening. But you can always go to mattbroward.broward.org and access information about our projects. That's Thank why you. I couldn't see it. I was just there it is. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Hello, thank you for this opportunity to hear about the projects. Um, my name is Georgia Sims from Georgia Gene Enterprises. I'm a management consultant company that uh, specializes in professional services, IT project management, and also consulting in human-centered design. So my question is for Corey. I heard about the pr uh, Primo project, and I heard you say you need help figuring it out. I wanted to know if you had considered using human-centered design in the design of the rail system to make sure it was truly customer-focused. First of all, I love your question. <laughs> um, and Arethia can attest to, we have a whole process that we're using for the customer experience to um, look at um, our Primo program, our commuter rail, from, a, from the passenger's perspective and to incorporate that very heavily into our design decisions um, and design standards. So we are actually working on that. Great question, thank you. Um, 
something that's near, near and dear to me. I mean, how many times have you tried to use something and go, it doesn't work for me and somebody should have thought of that? Well, we're trying to think through that, so we're thinking of the passenger. Great, thank you. So gang, I want to thank you all. Help me thank our presenters this afternoon. As mentioned, we really are extending that invitation to each of the agencies that if they choose or if they have the time, we really would like to set up a 90-minute session with you and them in an, in an area like this or probably in one of our other conference rooms so we can really dive deep uh, just with one agency at a time. That would be helpful to you guys. Uh, but again, we also do recognize, as mentioned by a very, 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 very close friend, we do want to make sure we can leverage as many opportunities for our small businesses as possible. So we will be doing that outreach to make sure we can bring some prime contractors. And in one example, specifically some architect prime contractors in a room so that they can meet some of these CBEs. Because again, it is about leveraging. Most of the time it really is about partnerships. And in that one example, based on how our agencies are going to the street, some of the only opportunities for our professional services on the front end is to make sure that the primes who will be addressing that solicitation is aware that they can use my small businesses, that the goal counts on the front as well as the back. And that is something we want to push more, so we get that. So again, we want to thank you um, for spending your Friday with us. Uh, thank our presenters. Um, if you need to exchange some cards or just say thank you, Now's the time for you to get up and say thank you. But other than that, thank you. Thank you all.